and we are supposed to pray for all people. I just want you to realize this, that God turned the captivity of Job when he prayed, not for himself. May I tell you, let you in on a little secret? The bishop has never prayed for himself. And I'm all right. If you pray for other people properly, you won't have to pray for yourself. Here's the way that I pray for other people. I begin just by saying this, God, make me a blessing. Why would I have to ask God to bless me if I ask him to make me a blessing to others? Because if God's going to make me a blessing, he's got to bless me with more than I need so that I can bless others. So you want to pray that way, God, make me a blessing. I want to be others focused. Make me a blessing. Let me be an encouragement to other people. May you give wisdom and strategy and understanding so that I can be a blessing. May I have a heart of encouragement so that I can make other people's way better. God, use something in my life. Bless me, God, so that I can financially be a blessing to other folks. If he doesn't, you know, because it's worse than an infidel if you don't take care of your own house. So he's got to bless you with enough for your house to be able to help somebody else. You ought to be able to pray and say, God, make me a giver. I, I mean, not lust to have a big car and a big house and more jewelry and more shoes and more pocketbooks. But God, bless me so that I can be a blessing to other people. Make me God. To thank you, God, that I'm not a homeless person, but help me to be able to provide shelter for somebody else. Let me help God somebody be able to pay for their education and help them get through school so that they can lift themselves up and be able to be a productive part of society. Help me, God, to help somebody help themselves. Help me, Jesus, to be a blessing to other people in my life. And that's the kind of prayer that we want to pray that God will bless other people. You see, because people that do bad things to other bad people don't feel blessed. And if you bless people, bless people don't curse other folks. If you got, I meant if a husband gets a raise on a job, he's, he will never come home and abuse his wife. He'll come home and say, baby, we're not cooking tonight. Here, not here. We're going out because when you feel good, you do good. So when you bless people, when you bless them, when you bless them, when you bless them. Let me just tell you this. That there, there, there are times that you've got to realize that God's got his hands on you. I re remember when I was in high school. And I was the vice president of my junior achievement company. And, and the young lady that was my secretary, she got up before the whole company one day and cursed me out. And I'm like, this girl cursed me so badly, she used compound curse words. And uh, I, I was so tempted. And then she started using gesticulation. And, and so I had to return the favor. And I said, no, 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 you're number one. Because I thought she was telling me that I was number one in her book. And I said, no, 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 you're number one in my book. You, you, you know. But right in that moment, she had gotten up. She'd cursed me out in front of the whole company using compound profane words. She was a young woman. And all of a sudden, I heard the Lord say to me, vengeance belongs to me. And I heard the Lord say these words to me. He says, bless those that curse you. He said to me, offer to her the other cheek. And he said, by that I mean show her a other, a, the other side that she's not seen. And the Lord spoke to me and began to minister to me about her because I was wondering what kind of a young lady. I, I don't use profanity. I never have. My vocabulary is too extensive for me to stoop to, vocab to profanity. <laughs> profanity is the language of the verbally handicapped. So why would I stoop to her level? Well, the Lord said this is all she knows. She's grown up in a house of belligerence. And she's acting out of the frustration of the environment out of which she has come. She's not seen blessing and so she's operating under the curse. And so I heard him say, bless them that curse you. And I looked at her with all of the love that I could muster in my heart. And as genuinely as I could communicate it, and I spoke and pronounced the blessing of God upon her. Immediately, I saw God disarm this girl. Because, you know, she put a hand on her hip and her neck went from side to side. 
But when I blessed her, she was totally disarmed because I didn't fight fire with fire. I used the water of the word and it put the fire out and she was totally disarmed. Every time that I have seen this young woman since that day, she has treated me with nothing but the utmost of respect. And I'm so glad that I took the high road, but I blessed her and I said, God, I don't know what is going on in her world that is causing her to spew out this level of expletives and maldiction that is coming out of her mouth. But it is odiferous and malodorous to me. And it certainly sounds like contumacious iconoclasm that is backfiring in my face. And I said, God, whatever it is that you need to do to go down in the deep recesses of her heart, as she is vigorously giving me dissenting ideas coming through her argumentative spirit. And I said, Jesus, minister your grace and bring peace into her in this hour. And the peace of God came over her in a wonderful, wonderful way. And I never had to get dirty using the same language. I'm just telling you, I blessed her, I blessed her, I blessed her. I put out the fire. You can't fight with somebody who refuses to defend themselves. You cannot, you cannot, you cannot.